<laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back. This is John Fedgeworth, mobilehomeinvesting.net. I have Aubrey right here sitting with me. Aubrey, thank you so much for, for, for being here. Uh, happy to be here, John. This is really cool. This is really cool. We've never done anything like this. This is going to be sort of a an ongoing progress report type video. Now, today's roughly day 40. We're going to get you back in the seat day 80. So just kind of, you know, follow you along on this journey that you're taking. Uh, you just got started with mobile home investing, like I said, about 40, 40 days ago. Um, before that, uh, you, were mo you were a real estate investor or you have a little bit of real estate investing experience. Can you talk about that briefly? Oh, sure, John. Yeah. So for about uh, 10, I got my, uh, I got into real estate about 10 years ago and started off in sales. And, uh, you know, people would walk through homes. They'd be like, ah, oh, you know, I just, I just don't see the potential. I'm like a little paint, little carpet. You got a ton of equity. You know, they just wouldn't see it. So I started off, um, you know, buying houses and, and flipping them. And I'm still doing that. Uh, but I found myself, you know, the minute I stopped flipping properties, my income stops. So, you know, um, I heard about you through a couple different people, and um, and love the the potential for passive, in somewhat passive income. You know, on, on, for a number of years through this business, and uh, it just seems like leverage wise, there's there's I can't think of any better uh, place to, to to go to do it. So yeah, excellent. Now we'll keep. Uh... I'm, I'm hoping that you have that same attitude here, you know, in the next couple of videos that we do together, <laughs> that that mindset sure. stays that way. Now, can I ask you, what is, um, you have 10 years of basically purchasing, fixing, and fast-turning homes. Mm -hmm. What, um, now that's a unique experience that a lot of other people don't get. Um, what advantages do you think that you have more so than other people coming into this field of mobile home investing? Uh, good question. So uh, coming into it, what I found has been a little uh, easier than it might be for a beginner is I have basic knowledge of homes. I have a network of contractors. Um, I have, you know, relationships with a lot of the supply places. Um, challenges have been some of the items. A, a lot of it will work with each other, single family residences and stick built houses and mobiles, but some don't like doors and things like that are different in the mobiles than they are in the single family. So I've had to, you know, find a couple other avenues, but definitely it's been easier already having that kind of foundation. Um, the relationships with both suppliers and contractors has helped. Will you be using the same people that you've used in the past, or are you going to be getting brand new people that are more mobile home exp experienced? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Some of the guys that I use for the um, for the stick built houses I found are a little more expensive than uh, some of the people I found lately for the mobiles. Um, so uh, I'm actually excited to develop some new relationships, which is, is already working out really well. Oh, right on. So um, the number of deals so far, now it's been 40 days um, immediately after getting started, or I'd like to say before we actually mean you got started together, you always had a clear vision. I just want to point this out. You always had a clear vision to say, you know, John, I want to be um, a great case study. I want to be doing more deals than most people who are doing. So you've always had that clear vision. It was never just a, hey, this is just to dip my big toe in. Um, what's happened now in those 40 days with the amount of people that you've talked to and the deals that you're closing? If you can kind of briefly kind of touch on some of these deals that you're doing. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, and, let me, and let me explain a little bit. So I've seen, I came into real estate in 05. So I kind of saw the, the peak of the market then I saw it crash. And then I've seen it obviously right now, market's great, but I know what's coming. We don't know when it's going to happen. It could be a year. It could be three years. We don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to turn. So the whole reason I got into this is I wanted to bulletproof my finances where if the flipping slows down, it gets hard. I'm whole, I'm sitting on some houses and can't turn them. I've got some, some income coming in every month steady. That was my whole reasoning behind this is I, I want to bulletproof everything where I can rely on something. So, um, I don't know if I, if I, I said I want to be the man, but I definitely uh, set some pretty, pretty clear goals on, on what I want for sure. So, and I definitely do want to be a great case study for you. So, absolutely. Did right. I answer your question? Oh, it certainly did. It definitely did. It, um, can we talk a little bit about the, uh, well, now, now that it's kind of 40 days in, uh, how many deals do you have under your belt? Or rather, you've purchased and then have you sold any or what's, how are, how are they looking or some, some of these looking? Sure. So I have possession of, as of uh, last week, four. I've got three more that I'm waiting on the um, the bonded title from. That, that, those the other three are from a park uh, park owner. Okay. Um, he should have those bonded titles in the next couple weeks, hopefully. Um, I'll get started on those, and then uh, I've got a couple sellers that I'm meeting with. Um, one today, 
and a couple, you know, later on in the week. So I guess you could say I have um, the four I, I already have possession of, plus those three, which he's getting the titles for me. So I guess seven right now. Um, the seven, three of those were purchased from the park directly, at least three right. from what you just said. Were the other four from from private sellers? Yeah, let me give you a breakdown. So um, the the three that are coming are free homes from a park manager. Um, he gave me one other one at another park. Not not as good of a deal, uh, but it was one of those. I, I want to. Uh, he wants to develop a relationship, and even though the numbers weren't as strong on that one as I wanted them to be, these other three definitely are. So I wanted to, you know, make a good relationship with him, um, do a good job, and he's real happy so far. So am I. So four from one park owner. Um, the the other ones. Uh, one was uh, from. And let me back up real quick. The way I got in touch with that park owner is one of the contractors that works for me on the stick built houses lives in a community and, and came to me and said, Hey, you know, I don't know if you want these, but you know, our, our park owner is going to uh, be giving away a few mobiles to somebody like you. I was like, yeah, let me talk to him. <laughs> now, <laughs> was that out of the range that you would have gone to anyway? Do you think that you would have found those homes or if not for that? Uh, I got I would have uh, because I was actually uh, it, it was just funny the way it worked out, John. Um, I went and I was visiting parks, you know, developing my first you know fifty uh, leads, and um, I was writing everything down. And that afternoon, after I'd already uh, visited a park, I was talking to my guy. I stopped by one of the flips and I was talking to him about you know what I was doing. And that's when he I didn't I didn't know he lived in a, in a mobile home community. And uh, we just started talking. I was like, well, which one do you, do you live in? And he told me, I was like, I was at that one an hour ago. And he's like, oh, man, I, I know the park manager really well, and I know the owner, and I can, I can help you out. So it's just a small world, you know, how things work out. It's, it's great. That's awesome. Did you um, – oh, let's talk actually before we move past this. The uh, bonded title, just to touch on that, that's the legal process for the owner to go ahead and, and get the title. Currently does not have the title. It was abandoned or – the person had to be evicted and there's just the titles missing or MIA or it's not in their name. So the bonded title is just a legal process for the folks listening to uh, in some states to go ahead and get that title. So now will that will that come into the park's name and then the park has to sell it to you? Exactly. Right. Bonded title. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. And now there, uh, do you negotiate any discounted lot rent for, with those three that you're going to be picking up soon? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So the first one, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He gave me a discount lot rent on, and we're going to get probably a few more months. If I'm taking three more at once, he'll probably give me a little more time. Okay. Uh, but the first one I did get a number of months uh, free and he's going to give me a few more in the other ones. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Right on. Now with uh, park managers, has this been the only friendly park manager? Are they, are they, um, I guess a uh, percentages wise, are they more apt to want to work with you to say, get the hell out of here somewhere in the middle? They've all been terrible. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've been great. Like e even John, even the the companies, the big companies, um, you know, nationwide companies who kind of do the same thing that we're doing with you know buying them and remodeling them. I think they rent them out, uh, but they they uh, um, they've been great. I've told I haven't ran into a bad park manager yet. I've used a lot of your scripts, you know, that that you give us. And then I've tried to take it a step further where I've actually, uh, I'll, I'll, I've delivered uh, flowers, um, <laughs> handwritten notes, gift cards. You know, yesterday I dropped off a, a, a personal note that I hand wrote that had a gift card to um, Chili's for her to take her as a park manager for her to take her family to dinner. And then um, I, I knew she had a couple kids. She had mentioned in passing she's going to pick up her kids. So I got her a gift card to um, a little ice cream shop right around the corner from the park. You know, and I said, hey, have dinner and dessert on me. Thanks for all your help. You know, she was so thankful. She she responded today, John, and said, in all of her years doing this, she's never had somebody do that for her, and it really meant a lot to her. That's so. incredible. Now, is that someone that you're already working with or a park manager you're not even working with? No, that's what I'm working with. Oh, okay. there, she's, she's the one who kind of uh, uh, helped me with those three deals, four total, but three, you know, uh, for free. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. How crazy that no one's ever – well, maybe she's never – just the fact that that's never happened. And park managers do have thankless jobs a lot of the time. They're, you know, every mm -hmm. day they're being given, lied to, you know, to their face, talked about behind their back. So right. you coming in there and helping and then giving this gift, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's, that's huge. What's been the most challenging part thus far, uh, 40 days in? What's been, yeah, the, just the most challenging or time consuming maybe? Or yeah, maybe those are two different things actually. You know, for a new Somebody coming into the business, I would think that finding good contractors would be the hardest. 
Um, and specifically, um, I've had trouble finding affordable, dependable movers. I had a, a home, uh, one I found on Craigslist. Uh, it was a guy posted them. They were three homes for eight hundred dollars, and they were they were pretty big homes. Um, you know, fourteen by seventy five, three bedroom, one and a half bath. And two of them were too far gone. One of them had fire damage, which I sent you the pictures of. Um, the other one just was is everything was gutted out of it. Um, but the third one I wanted. And um, I, the deal was I had to get it moved within two weeks. And this was this was really the first deal that I had going. And um, the uh, the movers I called, I had a list of them. A couple of them made promises that they would be there. I found a good price, a good mover, um, uh, right at two thousand. Which out of everybody I called, you know, that, that was a good deal for this area anyway. For the distance, I needed to move it. It was a long move, and um, and he he didn't show up. Uh, he called me the day before he was supposed to be there and just said, "Hey, I've had some stuff come up. I'm not going to be able to make it." And this was a couple days before kind of my deadline, you know, where I was under the gun, had to get this this mobile out of the community because this um, mobile home, uh, the park owner had another tenant moving in with a brand new mobile. He needed that spot. So I was kind of under the gun to call a backup person. And unfortunately I ended up paying, you know, a decent bit more money to get it moved. It worked out. I mean, the park I moved it to reimbursed me for the majority of the move. Um, but, uh, finding to answer your question, long story short, um, finding reliable, affordable contractors, uh, seems to be the most difficult thing for me anyway so far. Now, so you say that and you have 10 years of experience. What's something that you've done now to help start finding those contractors? And I would think that this is a journey. You know, we're yeah. always kind of looking for our uh, folks. Right. The, uh, but what, what are some tips that you could give uh, that you're using yourself and just from you know, a decade of experience? Yeah, thanks for asking. So I, I think that uh, the best thing that I found by far, excuse me, is um, talking to park managers, asking them who they use and who they recommend, uh, especially for the movers. Now I've gotten a couple good contractors from them too. So um, ask, asking park managers has been very helpful. Okay, perfect. And they're yeah, that's yeah. They're they 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 know. I mean, they have their finger on you know the pulse of who's doing what, who needs to work, who yeah takes advantage of people. So. Yeah, great. And that's just one of the plethora of questions that we're asking them. And that just gives you another reason to call them up or introduce yourself right. again. So right on. What's something that has been, I'm not sure if we already talked about this, but just surprising. You know, I mean, you kind of anticipated some stuff being in the real estate field for a decade. But with regards to mobile home investing, as much as we talked and you know, I told you what to expect, what's something that, you know, when you did get started, yeah, it was just kind of caught you off guard. Um, I would say I would say repair costs, and I would think somebody new in the in the mobile business would be able to relate with this. Um, not, excuse me, um, got a little cold getting over. Um, not knowing, you know, coming from the stick built house, stick built houses, I can walk through a home and pretty much pinpoint what I'm going to spend and calculate everything up. But I've never done something like wrapped a house in vinyl, so I really didn't know what that cost, what the labor would cost, or skirting, or you know, a lot of the the um, interior stuff that they have to do that's maybe a little different um, than the stick builds. So um, maybe um, I would say advice I could give to somebody brand new in the business, especially on the first few deals, is is find that contractor ahead of time and bring them through the mobile, the actual in you know actual walk through it in person and give you a, an estimate on what you're looking at. Because that's what surprised me is um, not knowing the exact cost. Um, so it's hard to pinpoint what your exact profits are going to be without having you know those exact numbers. Understood. Understood. Now the you think you just bring one person through to find that you know to find that first contractor handyman or bring a couple through at a time, give them small jobs, or I mean, how do you trust that first one going going forward? Uh, I, I would always recommend getting two or three quotes, um, but to, to get you a ballpark idea on a deal you might be negotiating, I think one is, is fine, because you know that person would do it for that job if you wanted them to, but you may be able to find somebody that's a little less expensive, a little more affordable. Um, but yeah, before work starts, I absolutely got two to three quotes on, e on each home, absolutely. Okay, understood. So then the first walkthrough might be just to gauge repairs, start making right. offers, and then you don't right. have to, okay, perfect. That makes, that makes great sense. What is the, um, on all of these homes, now let's actually, you said that, that the one, let's talk about what you project, because you've only had people walking through these homes, right? No one's closed yet. 
right yeah people. buyers yeah buyers right. buyers okay so we're at the point right now where we're talking that yeah you have people walking through these homes what's the let's talk about a, one of your skinnier project projected deals kind of the number the numbers on that one and then more of a sort of an average or lucrative deal like what do those look like buying and then repairs sure. and then uh resold you know just the uh rough 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 numbers sure so definitely, John, the skinniest deal was that first one from that park owner, and he owns five parks. I wanted, I was okay with it for that reason that he said he'd feed me some more deals. Um, that one, it's only going to um, cash flow about uh, 175 to 200 dollars a month, you know, which is definitely skinny. I, you know, I really want to be three to 400 uh, per month on each one. Um, so that's the more skinny deal, and it's just an area uh, a little further outside of, further away from the city you get the cheaper rent usually is. So if somebody's looking at an apartment versus a mobile, you know, they're comparing the two prices. It's just that's the most that area will bring. Where that same mobile in the other areas I'm working in will bring, you know, three hundred dollars or so more per month, two or three hundred more per month. So the, the the better one I got, probably the best one I got was um, one of the contractors, okay, remember the Craigslist guy I told you about a few minutes ago that, that said he had three mobiles, one of them was fire damaged? Oh, sure. Okay, he was actually a repair guy that worked for a, a park owner, and um, and he was just helping the park owner get rid of those homes. Well, he called, I met him at that, told him, at that park, told him I'd take that one from him, the one we talked about moving a minute ago. He called me and I told him, I said, look, if you come across any other deals, you know, let me know. And I told him I'd give him, you know, a finder's fee, a couple hundred dollars for helping me out. And and um, and he said uh, he said he will. Well, two days later, he called me and he said, hey, I'm sitting in a, in a community, you know, not too far from that other one that you saw. A really nice community, a nice home, a three bedroom. It's a 16, 16 by 75, oh, wow. a three bedroom, two full bath. And um, the owner wanted it was either four or six thousand. And I think it was might have been six to begin with, and then he said four. And I met with him and got it for uh, just a hair over two thousand. I think I paid twenty two fifty for it. And I mean, across the street, literally like ten feet right across the street, there there's a similar home that the park just sold for. Uh, this was newer, newer one, but forty seven, and it's smaller, you know. So you know, this one, I mean, I'm sure it'll easily bring. Being it's older, I mean, it's not brand new. But I'm sure it'll bring somewhere in the you know mid to high 20s uh, once it's said and done. And I bought it for you know 22.50, and I'm gonna put um, you know uh, probably about 2,000 in it. So I won't have much in that home, and it'll 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 be a great one. Yeah, that that's one of the better deals for sure. Now that is okay. In it for two, roughly another two to fix it. Um, sell it for the low twenties. The and there's buyers. I mean, you're not a from what you what what you know already. There's buyers at that cost at that price in terms all day. I got stopped in the park <laughs> leaving that home from a guy asking me, uh, you know, uh, if I have any for rent or for sale. So yes, absolutely, that'll be quick. <laughs> now, why would somebody sell a home to you for two thousand when the like you said ten feet across the street the park sold one granted a you know much newer for in the forties I mean what's the and I know the answer to this but what's the yeah why would somebody do that motivation I think is what it comes down to and he didn't have time um, to to sell it it didn't didn't really know how he didn't have a phone a working phone he didn't have internet connection. Um, all he could do was put a sign out, and I think he did have a sign out, and that's how the guys that I knew called me. But basically, he had to get to another state very quickly um, uh, to be with some family and just wanted to get rid of the home. Um, it did need work. It, it, he smoked a lot. Like It's one of those where you pull the stuff off the walls. And you can see, you know, the, the white spots where, where the pictures were, you know, because the walls are, are yellow, you know. But it was one of those where he just needed to sell it quick. It needed some work. And he just didn't have time to, to wait it out to get more money. And I told him, I was like, I want the, what's right for you. You know, you could probably get more money if you wait a little while and, and sell it to, to you know, owner-occupant buyer. Um, and he said, Aubrey, I just, I just want to get rid of it. What, what can you give me? And I, I gave him the price, and he, he said, okay. Nice. Excellent. What's something that you – uh, so far, and you, there might not be an answer to this one, but what's something that you just, you, you kind of, you gain value from? What's a what's a source of value that you get so far um, from being a mobile home investor? I mean, you really haven't made any money. In fact, you just kind of invested and been spending money. Has there been any value thus far that you've gotten in any yes. internal or external way? So a couple things. Uh, so financially for the future, I would say I found some other uh, 
a lot of distributors of products that are lower priced than what I had previously been paying. Um, so, and uh, it's that's been great. So I'm actually looking at some roofing materials, some uh, siding, um, you know, and some some sources for water heaters and doors and things like that. They're that less expensive than I had found previously. And uh, that was through the handyman, actually. Um, that one in particular we just talked about with that, that home from the guy that had to move quickly. Um, you know, he found a number of places, just really uh, inexpensive, affordable material. So I can use those. They're geared a little bit more towards mobiles, but a lot of the stuff they have I can use in single families, too. So that would be kind of one, you know, uh, benefit that I've already received, um, I think, from, yeah. from doing this so far. That's yeah. huge, yeah. That right on. That was not something I was expecting. What well, just the mobile home investing, uh, you know, career? How many hours would you say per week that you're investing in in, in the mobile home business? Good question. So, John, um, when I started, I know you're kind of ramping up and getting things rolling, getting your your fifty, you know, working on that. And it's hard because I have other businesses going, uh, but I found myself lately spending a lot more time on this um, than I have some of the other ones. I'm in a good spot right now where I can uh, I have the extra time. So I'm, I'm probably now, because of getting, I have four remodels going right now. I'm about to have three more going. So kind of coordinating all the materials to get to the jobs, doing the walkthroughs and the punch lists. Um, I'd say probably um, 30 to 40 hours a week. Let me be clear too. That was just last week I spent 30 to 40 hours, you know, getting everything together. Before then, I wasn't even – I actually feel like I'm letting myself down because I'm not putting the time in that I, that I, I can. Um, I'd probably say the weeks prior to that, I'm putting in maybe um, 15 to 20, you know what I mean, handling other business because I've got other stuff going on, you know, but maybe 15 to 20 to get these rolling. Now that I have these here, I don't have a choice. The guys need the materials. They, we need to do the walkthroughs. I can't sit on them because I'd, I'd be paying lot rent if I sit on them, right. you know, so I didn't have a choice. But, I mean, to me, it's amazing. I'm so happy that the little amount of work that I've put in so far has reached this kind of benefit. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Don't make it sound too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so it is hard work. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about hard. It, I enjoy it. So it's fun. You know, it's constant work. Maybe it's not difficult, but there's, right. yeah, there's always things to do or there's yeah, a lot of moving parts, but excellent. So you're juggling this, you have the other business. Um, day uh well today's day 40 we're gonna get you back here for an 80-day recap thank you so much for just kind of giving of yourself and talking candidly and openly here really appreciate it Four to six weeks later <laughs> all right so here we are now in completely different clothes we time traveled now almost two months into the future uh, probably look the same aubrey thank you so much for being for being here again you bet. Happy to be here. <laughs> so, so now that we are now almost two months into the future, things have changed. Things have progressed a little bit um, in both of our businesses. Please, um, when we left you, you had a number of properties. Um, you were kind of holding tight to getting some of those fixed up and then resold and then going to go ahead and buy some more. Um, what's what's changed in that time if you can remember you know the, yeah, <laughs> the past. absolutely yeah, okay. so uh, so i've got all of them have been remodeled everything's done i've got um uh either them filled or applications in on all of them um they're not all filled yet but i am processing applications on every single one of them right now um i have five in my possession i have uh four more that are I'm still waiting on it. In the last video recording, we talked about it. The um, park owner was giving me um, some with a bonded title, and he's working on that right now. He's still trying to get me the title, so he says hopefully in the next you know week or two he'll have them. So by then, if we do another call, you know by then I should hopefully have those in my possession. Um, and I've got um, a number of sellers that I'm meeting with you know over the next uh, few days. So I've got a bunch in the pipeline. I have kind of since we last spoke, John, put the brakes a little bit on picking up a lot more properties. I have gotten calls and everything. I just wanted to get everybody, I didn't want to have a lot of holding costs. I wanted to get everybody into properties, get these rented out, um, or sold rather, to a tenant buyer before getting another round of, of properties. So that's, that's kind of where we're at now. That makes sense. I mean, really, you know, you're still in the phase where you're kind of proving this to yourself. Does this right. work? Like, does this make money? Let me, do I want to keep doing this? With regards to, to rehab and, and fixing homes up single families, uh, what's the difference between the mobile homes and the single families? Um, you didn't have too much experience rehabbing them prior. 
No, not at all for the, okay. for the mobiles. No, uh, a lot of experience doing um, single families. And what I kind of fell into and what, what I know what we talked about previously is um, I, I got into where I'm over improving them, <laughs> you know, putting more than I need to. So uh, on the next couple properties, I'm going to try doing the minimal and kind of sell them, try selling them as a handyman special. Okay. That way it doesn't take so long to recuperate uh, the money that I have in the properties. All right. Let's, for example, so the homes that you're getting now, the they're between two and three bedrooms. They're in a park. You're purchasing them for, what would you say out of a scale of like one to ten? What's the what's the condition of the homes that when you're when you're buying them? The ones that the parks give me are in terrible condition. You no, know, they're they're borderline. They're trying to decide if they want to tear them down. You don't have them, you know, hauled off, or if they want to sell them. Um, the ones I'm getting from uh, owners are not really in bad shape. Um, you know, they, they of course could use a little paint and carpet, but I don't even think they necessarily um, have to have that. And that's what I'm gonna try is, you know, people were living in them before, it, they weren't terrible condition, they, you know, they need to be cleaned up, you know, go in there and give it a good thorough cleaning. Um, but I'm gonna try to sell them without doing much to them. You know, I've, I've gotten them at good prices. Um, and I think that, you know, doing the, the um, program, you know, where we're going to sell them on payments. I think I can. I think I can do that. So I'm going to try that. Well, now, what was the thought process then? Maybe you just didn't have any control. Maybe it was your handyman, and they kind of went wild with it. But what was your thought process with getting the homes re repaired? The ones that you already did. The ones that you said that you put a little bit too much time or money into. Uh, right. But they look gorgeous. You know? Right. So even even the ones that um, that the handyman. So. To what we talked about in the last call was the handyman that I use has actually been a source of properties for me, uh, which is coming really hand, which is coming really great because um, he 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 he'll drive the communities or he he hears you know uh, through the grapevine about properties that may become available and he'll call me. Um, but even the other ones, I'm so used to to the single families. I've, I've been a, a flipper for a long time and I, and I buy and hold too. I have rental properties too. But in flipping, I always did everything to the nines. You know what I mean? It was granite countertops, hardwood floors new light fixtures, new faucets, you know, new everything. And so getting this and trying to turn that off and say, look, I don't need to do that much, you know, was hard. So a part of it's me, really. But the other side is the handyman, the ones he gives me, he's giving me knowing that I'm going to give him work. So those ones, I, I'm going to have to find a balance between going overboard and maybe just have him do a little paint and try to get by with that uh, rather than doing everything to them. Does that answer your question? It sure does, absolutely, and and then some. It's good that you'll have the spectrum of fixing homes up the, to the nines versus getting them to a condition where they're not fixed up completely, but you still have, I mean, the end result is having a low risk, you know, tenant buyer in the home who's qualified, who can has the ability to pay, no evictions, hardworking, and they're happy. I mean, it's not my job to judge, you know, who's gonna be happy in a home. Question, when, I assume that it's super easy to get these sold. Anybody that's walking through them, as long as the price is right, the terms are right, um, and the location is good, you know, they're not having any problem with the homes. Oh, not at all. Everybody that love, walks in them loves them. One other, th one other thing that I've learned um, is I was um, being too specific on exactly what I needed from a tenant buyer and, and kind of not being flexible up front and I was losing what could be some good tenant buyers and what I mean by that is the upfront you know down payment um, if it's a good buyer you know I've learned I need to be a little flexible with that um, if they've got good rental history and decent credit and they're gonna be a good tenant um, then maybe put them on a payment plan where at first I probably lost a lot of and a lot of time too, a lot of good buyers and a lot of time on the market by saying no I need X amount of dollars and that's it you know drawing a line in the sand um, uh, where I could have sold them a lot quicker had I been more flexible so I've changed um, uh, how I'm doing that and that's helped immensely so what do you personally personally like better the the purchasing side I mean if you if you had to outsource one of these sides first the acquisition side talking to the sellers or buyers talking to buyers I, I so I enjoy uh, buying the properties and remodeling. I don't necessarily enjoy 
uh, qualifying tenants and looking through paperwork. And I'm, I'm calling, I'm verifying employment, I'm getting copies of paycheck stubs to verify income. You know, that side's not fun. <laughs> Maybe it is for somebody, but you know, I, I definitely enjoy more of the negotiating up front. That's exciting for me. You know, taking a property that's a little beat up, making it look nicer, that's exciting for me. Um, yeah, qualifying the tenants, not so exciting, but it's a necessary evil. It's got to be fun. <laughs> Yeah. And, and that's one. I think that's one important thing, and I think you're good about stressing it to people. Is you've got to take the time to to um, qualify them. If you just take the first person that comes in off the street, you could get bit, you know, and be stuck with a deadbeat tenant not making payments and have to go through evictions. Nobody wants that. So um, I know what needs to be done. And, you know, I, I just do it. But yeah, if I could outsource something, it would be that. But I would never outsource it because then if it didn't work out, I would be upset with whoever I trusted to. Um, to qualify that tenant. I think that's probably the most important part of it is getting the right tenant in there. So I wouldn't outsource that. Wow, okay. So that's that's huge. I mean, you love doing the acquisitions, but the the selling is so darn important. And you're right, you can do all that, you know, you, you can purchase the home correctly, you can fix it correctly, and then you sell the home to the wrong person. And they're just a nightmare. They're malicious from the beginning, or they had, you know, ulterior motives that you never knew about. Um, and, and I love what you said just you know earlier in the call. It's nobody's fault but my own. I mean, that's something I, I say weekly. At least the um, any mm, surprises or changes with any of the park management? Did they turn out to be bipolar? Uh, are they still loving you? You know, have they changed anything like that, good or bad? You know, I've had um, going into this. I expected that some of the park managers would be real reluctant and not nice or friendly or you know. Uh, whatever the case is, they've all been wonderful. Every single one of them, you know, and I'm real nice to them. I send them, you know, personal notes and thank yous. And I've dropped flowers off for some, you know, oh, and okay. so I, I've sent Starbucks cards to other ones. So I'm, I'm nice to them. They are awesome to me. So, um, I've, you know, <laughs> I've, uh, I've really enjoyed all the park managers. Yes, there has been a turnover in, uh, in one of the parks, one of the nicer ones. Um, but the, the new lady's great too. So, uh, you know, so far, you know, so good. Everything's great. Excellent. Any, um, any interesting stories or stories that uh, you know we all we're always gathering more and more as as invest as mobile home investors. Definitely, yeah. So uh, I have a I have a good story I'd love to share. Um, there was a, a couple who was coming down from uh, Michigan, from out of state, yeah. And um, they uh, they had they wanted to buy it sight unseen. And I, the first time I talked to her. I told her, I was like, well, you know, I'd like to meet you, you know, at the home. We can walk through, you know, take a look at it together before we do any paperwork and everything. And she said, uh, she said, well, you know, I, um, she said, I, I won't have time to come down again before um, I, she has a, she had a job transfer. It was a, she was with a good company. I got the verification employment, great salary. And they were transferring her, transferring her here, actually a suburb north of. And um, so she said, no, look, I, I can't make it down there. I have the down payment money. I have my boss will go take a look at the property. And he did and said everything looked really nice because it did. It looked really nice. Um, she got here um, uh, and with the moving truck, you know, in the driveway. And it was too small. Their stuff just wouldn't fit in it. Yes, it was nice. They loved it. But their stuff would not fit in, in that home. So here they are, drove through the night from Michigan. Every, every penny they had, 28 uh, twenty eight seventy five, two thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars they had in a money order was pretty much everything they had made out to me, you know, and they're sitting in the, in the driving in the parking lot of a home that won't work for them. So uh, my for I'm a I'm a you know a good honest sincere person. I would have given them their, their money back. You know what I mean? I would said no problem. You guys go find something else. You know, no worries. Get an apartment or something for a little while. Uh, but they they asked me. They said, do you have anything else? And I would have told them this too, but I don't have anything close by. I was like, the closest thing I have is in another city. It's about 30 minutes away. And she said to me, she said, Aubrey, she said, I was driving 30, 45 minutes to work every day anyway. You know, um, I'm fine with that. You know, is, is it bigger than this one? I'm like, yeah, it is. It's a little more expensive, you know, per month, uh, but it's a lot bigger home. So um, I drove them over there. They absolutely fell in love. As soon as they opened the door, it had a, this one had the previous owner expanded it a little bit, did a kind of a kick out on the side of it. So when you walk in, the family room's probably almost as wide as a double, you know? So it's a very, very nice uh, mobile. And um, just everything that was in there just, just fit their uh, lifestyle perfectly. The way it was laid out, the colors that were in there, she, just everything was great. So they, <laughs> they bought it that day. I, I, I'd rush to a, you know, a FedEx Kinko's or no UPS store and uh, do all the paperwork on the floor, <laughs> you know, print it up and get it notarized and swap checks and keys. So, and they're happy. They love it, you know. 
one important thing about that buyer is that park, it just happened to work out. Normally you all, not normally, you always want the buyer to be park approved. What was really cool about this is the park, it was the same park owner the one on those two cities, it just so happened to be the same park owner. So they they had already been park approved. So I, you know, I, it worked out really well. <laughs> That's fantastic. That, you know, I like this right now because we're taking the time to look at what's going on. I mean, life gets in the way. Life happens. Whenever there's someone that, you know, you said you want to have first thirty deals in your first you know year. That's thirty families. I mean, thirty families that you're helping or getting out of this you know, whatever instant or situation that they're in, 30 families, you're helping to put people in these homes. Um, so it's cool that we're kind of seeing, you know, what's going on along along the way. I mean, you're now at five, but you want all these others. So when you do get to 30, I mean, you're going to look like a genius. People are going to like, how'd you do that? I can't believe you're so lucky. Like, how'd you get so lucky? You know, but it's not that like we're busting our butts here. So hard work. Um, thank you for being on here. Darn right. Sure. Yeah. You bet, John. Thank cool. you.